Phonetics is a 19th century phenomenon, and our Tajweed science preserved the, the, the sounds of the Arabic language, the points of articulation. This is what they're called now in, in modern phonetics, the points of articulation. We had Makharij al huruf over a thousand years ago. This is the ilham from, from God. The greatest proof of the truth of Islam is the preservation of the Arabic language in that the meanings of Quran are absolutely preserved. The Jewish people didn't work out until a, a Farsi Jew, a Jew from Morocco, in the ninth century worked out that Hebrew was based on triliteral roots. They didn't even know that a thousand years, two thousand years ago. The, the, the Bible is, is over 2,500 years, the, the Torah, and they didn't even know their words were built on triliteral stems until the Arabs pointed it out to them. The Jews didn't even make a dictionary to preserve the meanings of the, the, the Torah until the Arabs, all of a sudden they start seeing the Arabs making dictionaries and they said, we should have done that a couple thousand years ago. I, I'm not making this up, really. They, they made that, and that's why the Jewish people, when they study the meanings of the Semitic roots of their language, they have to go back to the Arabic dictionaries. This is a well-known fact. They have to go back and look at the triliteral roots of the Arab and how they explain them. So you take a word, for instance, like nafasa. Nafasa is based on a, a, on a, a root which is na and fa. And then the third letter, which is the, the, what's known as the lamb letter, it changes as the root changes to give it different meanings. And it's based on the attributes of the letter. So you have nafasa is to breathe. And then you have nafatha, which is to blow lightly. And then you have nafaha, which is like a nafahat, which are like a wind. So you get the ha sound, which is in riyah, riyah. You can hear the wind in it. Ha, this is not the ding-dong theory. This is because it's a divine language. And then you have nafakha. You harf isti'la. It's a strong letter and it becomes kha to blow with force. So you have nafasa, nafatha, nafaha, and nafakha. And, and you'll find this throughout the Arabic language. It's very sophisticated in, in the way that Allah has designed it. Now the words that make up the, the actual letters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. Look at these letters. Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha. Allah. Allah. It begins with a Hamza, which is at the deepest articulation of the throat. And this is where the, 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 the name of Allah is emanating from the, the point in which human vocalization is possible. It's coming from the depths of the, of the vocal tract. And you say Allah, and it goes back to the ha, which is at the deepest uh, of the, 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 these are called huruf al halq the, 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 the ha, ha and hamza, right? That's an aqsa al halq And so it begins in the aqsa al halq in the, in the depths of the throat, and it returns to the depths of the throat. But in the midst of it, you have a letter which is in the jawf or the lisan. Allah, Allah. And this is something incredible because one of the things in the Greek language, lulen is a Greek word and it means to soothe or comfort because it's been recognized throughout history that the, uh, the la sound is a soothing and comforting sound for children. And that's where you get lullaby and you get la la, like this is something mothers will do to their children. La 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 la, like this. Why? Because it's a soothing sound. It actually brings a type of sakina to the heart. And so the name of Allah is something that actually brings a tranquility to the human being when they say it, Allah. In the Taoist tradition, they have a, what they call the universal meditation is based on putting the tongue at the roof of the mouth and doing that several times. La, 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 like that. Because they believe that connects all of the meridian channels in the body. They actually do that as a practice. When you say, La ilaha illallah, it's amazing that Allah has made those sounds. Anybody can say those sounds. Look at La ilaha illallah. You have La ilaha illallah. Four words comprised entirely of three letters. Alif, Lam, and Ha. 
What does Alif Lam Ha spell? Ilahun. And what are you saying? La ilaha illallah. There's no ilahun except Allah. And you're doing it with the letters that comprise the name of Allah. This is something incredible. Who thought of this? Do you think a human being worked all of these things out? Do you think the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam worked all these things out? Let's see, what, what could I make a, a, a wording that would use all the letters of... This, this is not possible. You see, this is where you begin to realize this is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. One of the fascinating things about La Ilaha Illallah, look how light it is on the tongue. Anybody can say it. La Ilaha Illallah. But move to Muhammadun Rasulullah. Suddenly it becomes weighty. You see, Allah makes it easy to say Tawheed. But how to live Tawheed? That's the difficult part. How to live Muhammadun Rasulullah. Now look at the idgham there. Why does Allah have an idgham? There's no idgham in La ilaha illallah. There's no blurring in, right? Each of the, the, the things are articulated without idgham. Idgham is assimilation in tajweed, right? Now look at Muhammadun Rasulullah. He's assimilated into Rasulullah because that, that is who he is. He is Rasulullah. So his name is actually assimilated into the word itself. The, the noon of his Muhammadun becomes the, the part of the Ra, Muhammadun Rasulullah. And then even when you do it with the, the, the Muhammadun Rasulillah or Muhammadun Rasulullah, it all has idgham. You have to say that, which is amazing. It is amazing, that thing. So this is, Allah has made these secrets in the Arabic.